Hey, this is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley. We're continuing our series with the Skunk Works project I'm working on with Rust as the calculations and TypeScript as the front end development environment. On the phone with me, I have Keith Milford. Keith, go ahead and say hello. Hello. We also have Suzanne Schwartz. Suzanne, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Hi. And Kobe Gross. Uh, Kobe, go ahead and say hello. So this, this video is going to be on state management, specifically local state and Redux state. So um, if anybody here is familiar with React, and I know Kobe's familiar, uh, Re Redux is a way of doing global state management, and then the local state is per component. So we're going to do a couple of small examples with that. Uh, I'm going to start with the local state. So local state is if there's any component, and I'm going to go to a different screen here. Wrong one. So if this component here, the red square, is going to want to hold its own information, that's called local state. So if I go to that component, you'll see something here that says my state. And you could have uh, named it anything you like. Uh, it could, could have been uh, button transition state, it probably would have been more proper but I'm holding a color value on there, and that's held within the control itself. So when you create your control, what you're gonna be doing is initializing your control value uh, in here. And all I'm gonna be doing is saying, based on a zero, one, or anything else, I'm gonna do the color. This is gonna be red, which is what you saw on the screen. This is green, and this is gonna be blue. And then it's just going to use that inside of the DSS. So far, so good. Any questions? No, makes sense. No. So all it's going to do is when you do your mouse down, it's going to say, am I a zero? Go ahead and toggle that to a one. If I'm a one, toggle that to a two. Uh, otherwise, go back to zero. So it's just going to toggle through three different colors. So if I click on it, it'll turn green and then blue and then back to red. Now, uh, does the blue look really dull to you guys? No. No? Yeah. So this is uh, another example of how I, I think I just can't see blue very well. That looks about half as bright to me as it does the other colors. So there you go. That's why I shouldn't be picking colors. <laughs> okay. So, so far, uh, if you understand React or even Vue or Elm or any one of those other frameworks, that should feel very familiar. Uh, any questions so far on how to do local state? I'll go back to the code just so you can see. No, I got it. Sounds, it seems pretty straightforward. Okay. Kobe, uh, I, I'm going to be interested in hearing your feedback uh, most of all because you're such a, you know, a, a React guru. Simple local state, yeah, that's all it is. So that was actually quite easy for, for me to do. One thing I do want to point out, uh, between renders, sometimes uh, you know I, I do it by position and transfer state over if it looks like it should be. But I've also created an ID just in case. Uh, if it can't figure it out, it says, yes, that's for sure what I wanted. So if I go into the button container, I'm actually setting an ID to something. If I didn't set that in this specific case, I, I, I made uh, an example where it would for sure have a problem. This is kind of the anchor, so that when it goes from one render to the next, it, it knows to transfer that state to the next one. Okay. All right, so that was pretty easy. Uh, next thing, next up is gonna be, uh, I've hooked up Redux to the Skunk Works project. Uh, Redux uh, is gonna work fairly similar to what you may be used to. And so I've just set up two different stores. Let's go in the main app first. So it's going to look probably pretty familiar. So you have your action definitions up here. And then you get uh, your, your known action collection, your action creators. And the one, th one thing Kobe might notice is that on here, we don't have any thunk. Uh, uh, so I've kind of done things a little differently, and I didn't rely on thunk. They're just straight functions. And what Thunk did before is inserted the dispatch in the get state. Well, I just bring those in at the top level. 
up here. So I don't think I need thunk. Thunk is just middleware for, for the store. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, you agree or disagree, but uh, that's kind of how I set it up. And so I think it actually makes these uh, function, these actions a little, little clearer, but you guys tell me if, it, if it's clear or not. It's so, super clear. I think the only reason for the funk though was for asynchronous calls for the store. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Uh, I'm gonna have to test that out to make sure I can do a asynchronous calls. I don't think, as long as I set, the, set a promise through a fetch, I think it's okay. But uh, that's a good point. I'm going to have to uh, test it out. In worst case, I go insert it back in. Big deal. No big deal. And so uh, here is where you might go hit an API. Uh, I haven't done that logic yet, but um, that's, just, that's just where you might do it. And then the reducer should look exactly the same as what you're used to with React. All you're doing is for every, for every action, you're just returning back a state of that kind. So the only thing on this um, on this data model that we really kind of curly have to worry about in my example is this click count. And so on this page over here on the settings page, I have this click count here. And that's actually going to do two things. That's going to update our Redux model, but it's also going to change our theme for us. And so I actually have two stores, one for system state, which holds things like themes, and then one for app state, like the main app store that I have. So if I click it, it's actually going to do two different things. It's going to change our theme, and it's going to incre increment that uh, click count by one. Okay, so let's take a look at how that code looks. Uh, that's in the settings page. Okay, so in here, uh, this is the mouse down event. And so it's just, uh, uh, first of all, saying increment my click count. And so that'll just call the, in the main app, that'll just call the add click count right here. Okay. And then what it does is says, if my click count is even, set my theme to theme A. If it's odd, set it to theme B. So it, it should be pretty straightforward, but the, it's just demonstrating you can actually hit two different stores, which in Redux, that was always the case. But uh, it's just an example of doing multiple th things on the same event. So you might be wondering uh, where, where these actions came from. So, so, so on the page level, all I'm doing is importing the action creators per store that I need. And that seems to be sufficient. And then on the um, page level, the page props is gonna have your entire state. So in Redux, you may be used to uh, at the bottom of the page where you're doing the map state to props and map dispatch to props. Those don't exist on, on my, my uh, framework. All it does is say, hey, you just go import what you need and then you just use it. And I think that's um, part of the reason I got rid of Thunk is just to have a little more straightforward workflow here. So instead of having all that map state to whatever at the bottom of this screen, uh, it just goes uh, straight for the throat. So, so far so good? All right, well, this is a little easier demonstration than I thought it would be. I, th I, uh, I thought there'd be more questions, but I guess it's just Redux, right? So, yeah, and so the benefit of all this is now I have access to the built-in Redux store. Let's move this guy. So now I have access to my state here just like I would with any React application. So I can see what my current theme looks like and I have some default, uh, default font sizes and everything like that. Here's my click count. If I click it a few more times, it'll increment the click count and so on and so forth. And so I wanted to preserve all the tools that we have with Redux in other applications 
and be able to do it within this application. Hey Doug, um, I'm not as familiar with uh, React as, as you and W are. So okay. excuse me if this is a dumb question, but um, why are you using interfaces instead of like classes? Okay. So uh, what Keith is uh, referring to, let me move this guy again. Here, let's just move this down here. Uh, is if I go into one of these guys and there's a div, this is actually defined as an interface when you might think a div as, should be a class. And so you'd have a constructor and you'd have your render associated within the class itself. Uh, I've kind of toggled between the two quite a bit. And I did do this entire thing with classes. The problem with classes though, is in the constructor, if you're gonna pass in anything, you have to pass in everything. So in the, let's say for the uh, about page here, uh, I have a DSS assigned here and I also have some text. Well, if I did this as a class, I would have also ha had to do the all the click events and key up of key events and wheel events and everything like that. And so it became very heavy for the developer to try to do, but interfaces allow you to do anything that's not required. And it's kind of like, put it in there if you want to. I'm not sure if that fully made sense. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, it saves you a lot of time with the on-click kind of thing. It's also, yes, yes, it's also cleaner to look at. So instead of looking at 5,000, additional things that I would have to put in for every div. So it's less typing, but it's less for your eye to look at. So it's, it's, it's really only put in what you need. And the interface allows me to do that. And the um, div constructor just wouldn't be feasible. But I, I did try it. I, I did push in that direction. It took me quite some time to kind of him and haw between the two different methods. And I finally, finally fell on interface. All right, is, uh, are there any other questions? Yeah, so um, what is REST used for the, in this application? Yeah, so so far you guys have really seen just uh, TypeScript files. And so that's a question somebody else brought up uh, on one of the comments uh, sections. It's like, where is Rust involved? I do Rust for the uh, virtual DOM calculations. Uh, the reason being is, I need speed and memory efficiency in that section. For everything else, TypeScript is much more ergonomic, uh, much more uh, user-friendly for the developer. So, the, so it, even though this is a Rust-based uh, project, for end developers, they're just gonna be living in a TypeScript world, pretty much. Are we, are we gonna see uh, some Rust example code? Uh... Project available or anything? I, I can give you guys the GitHub project and you guys can look at it. I don't want to uh, expose it on the YouTube video just yet. Uh, I'm not I'm not 100% there to make it public quite yet, but I don't mind if you guys take a look at it. That's fine. I'll send you the GitHub location. Okay, thanks. So what, what, what are the next steps? So uh, the next steps, I, I want to do a few things. Uh, I want to get this ready for augmented reality. So making it so the screens are naturally 3D. So if you have glasses on, for example, and you wanna put a screen on a wall and then a different screen on a different wall, it'd be available to do that quite naturally with, these, uh, with, with this dev framework. Um, also, I wanna include some animations inside of the DSS. So it'll naturally, you can move between two different, two different control layouts very smoothly and it'll just be built into the DSS. So um, thanks, for, thanks for asking about that. Um, I think it'll be a real nice addition and that's kind of where my vision is going with this is much more 3D immersive and much smoother graphics than what HTML can provide. A big reason why I did this whole thing in the first place. Right. Oh, I look forward to seeing it. Great, great. All right. Getting, uh, it'll be getting augmented, augmented reality running with WebGL and Rust as the processor, which seems super exciting. Uh, I, I can't wait to play with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it'll be groundbreaking. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm trying to do things uh, uh, slow so that uh, I do things right. 
but um, I, I'm making good progress and I, I'm just kind of pushing towards that end goal. I think it'd be great. All right, I, th I, think, uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much for uh, watching this brief demo. I know it wasn't a lot of flash in the pan type of deal. It was kind of bread and butter stuff, but I think that's just as important. And uh, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Very great. Right. Thanks for sharing.